Have you ever wished upon a star? What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm giving you my review of Disney's Wish. This is the latest Walt Disney Animation Studios film. And before I give you guys my thoughts on this thing, be sure to hit that like button. Comment down below some of your expectations or predictions if you've not yet seen it. And your thoughts on this movie if you've seen it as of watching this video. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. I mean a lot, I'm trying to make that final push as we approach the end of the year. And go show some love to the unusual couple podcasts for weekly episodes, a new one dropped yesterday. All right, so Wish is the 62nd Walt Disney Disney Animation Studios film, and I'm actually currently working my way through every movie in that filmography, and I'm over halfway through, so if you want to see my reviews of these movies as I watch some for the first time and re-watch a lot of them, you can do that by following me on Letterboxd, link down below, at Filmstock, so go show some love over there. But yeah, let's talk Wish. So this year is the 100-year celebration of Disney, and this film commemorates that in a way. In fact, it pays homage to every Disney film of the past, it seems, specifically the Disney animated films through little Easter eggs or hints in the movie. And overall, like the main plot of this film, you know, it really hones in on this idea of your dreams chasing them. And it's very sort of reminiscent of the way Disney makes you feel. Like this is a Disney movie through and through, and it reminds you to chase your dreams and take a chance or never give up on your dreams or wishes in life. So there's an undeniable magic that this movie presents, and it feels like a Renaissance era movie. That's my favorite era of the Disney films, and it definitely just has those vibes, especially the way the film's paced. It's only an hour and a half, which I think think is about the longest a Disney animated film should be. In fact, some of these early ones are like an hour and 10, hour 15 minutes. And so an hour and a half is the perfect amount of time for a movie that's structured like this. And for a movie of this subject matter, it just works. This movie did not feel over long or drawn out, thankfully. What's one thing the Renaissance era has? Great villains. And this movie provides that as well. Chris Pine gets to play the character Magnifico, the main villain of the film, and he owns it. He fully commits. I mean, Chris Pine just has this natural charm to him and his live action roles, and that translates directly to his voice acting, playing this character who's animated super handsomely intentionally because by nature this character is a bit of a manipulator and that sort of unfolds throughout the course of the movie. You'll see I don't want to give away too many details here, um, but he plays the main Disney villain and he's got that charm on the outside, but once you learn more about him, he sort of has that Jafar or Scar energy where he's going to manipulate you and get you to believe anything that he pleases so that he can control you at the end of the day. This character had a commanding screen presence and was one of the highlights of the film for sure. He had a few songs here and there. They're not anywhere close to the all-time best Disney villain songs, but they were fine enough, and I do think Chris Pine owned this role. He had a lot of fun, and it shows, but anytime you go to a Disney animated film, you're gonna go and hope there's some great music, and I'm happy to say this movie does deliver on some bops. It's got really solid music through and through, but the clear standout to me is this wish. This is like the let it go of this movie. It's the how far I'll go from Moana. It's the song, like when you hear it, it's far and away better than the rest. It's the one that will be, you know, probably nominated if this movie gets nominated for anything from the musical categories and it is also the song that will be overplayed on the radio so be prepared to hear this in excess over the next year and if you have kids out there I'm sure you'll hate this song in a few months so this movie delivers on having some bops in the music department it's got a really solid Disney villain and the main plot is interesting enough as it does pay homage to Disney and this idea of dreams and wishes however I wasn't really blown away by this one it's still a really solid watch but it didn't have that wow factor like something that Tangled Moana or Frozen contains and that's because this movie never fully committed to certain ideas or character relationships. To me, there were a few relationships that the main character Asha had, notably with her grandfather, that seemed early on like they were going to be this huge emotional crux of the film, and they kind of strayed away from that over the course of the runtime. There were a lot of side characters that were introduced and sort of took the spotlight from major emotional relationships and almost diluted them in a way because there were too many characters at once. Like from an emotional standpoint, I was ready to have my heart ripped out, just like in the first 10 minutes of Up with, you know, Asha and her grandfather, and I felt like the movie just straight away from that. It never wanted to fully commit to being that real emotional, heartwarming, yet heartbreaking relationship. And we never really got that with this film. In fact, certain ideas within the main plot are a little too vague for my liking. You know, this idea of the wishes being protected by Magnifico is interesting on paper, but the execution to me is a little lacking. Um, it was a little too vague for its own good, meaning we never fully delved into these ideas, and I, I wish they would have almost gotten more into the lore of the wishes and had them feel more important than they ended up being. But probably my biggest knock at the film is that it gets a little too cheesy and cliche for its own good, and trust me, I've been watching through 
every Disney movie over on my letterbox. You can follow along that journey. I know a lot of these movies have those cliche happy endings and all that, but this movie just got a little too cheesy for me, a little too on the nose with its main ideas. It took me out ever so slightly. Again, it didn't ruin the movie. It's still positive on it. It's a very enjoyable watch, and if you have kids, if you are a kid, you will really enjoy this movie. In fact, I got a kick out of it. The music was delightful. It had a great Disney villain, and the main plot was fine enough. I just thought this movie was really going to wow me, and it didn't. It's somewhere in the three and a half out of five range. It will entertain you, for sure. But it's definitely not the best Disney animation has to offer. It doesn't hold a candle to something like Moana, something like Frozen, something like Tangled. I'd contest that Ryan the Last Dragon might be better than it, so it's hard to say. The movie's solid, and I do think if you're a fan of Disney, you'll like it, and it's a well-made movie. It just isn't the upper echelon of Disney, and that's okay. Not everything has to be. It does its job when it comes to paying homage to eras of past for Disney animation, but sometimes it does feel a little gimmicky in a sense that it loses focus of what the main plot is, and it's like, oh, here's this reference to this Disney movie, and this reference to this Disney movie. And it almost became more of this big hidden Mickey game, which could be to a fault at times. But this is a harmless movie. It's sweet. It pays homage to Disney, and if you have any love for Disney in your life or any ounce of nostalgia for any of these films growing up, you will find some enjoyment with Wish. It's a very solid watch in my mind. But those are just my quick thoughts on Wish. Let me know yours in the comments down below if you've seen the film, as well as your expectations if you have not yet seen this one. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. It'll mean a lot. And stay tuned for more content coming very soon. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.